So here I'm going to talk a little bit about fluorescent lights. Uh, while there's many different types, T5 high output fluorescents are typically kind of the standard here. They're nice thin bulbs that produce a nice high output uh, and great if you're looking at getting clones going or starting seedlings. So they're best suited, as I said, for clones or seedlings. Uh, they're soft light that's not as intense as other options that you may have. Should be kept close to the plants, one to two inches away, or if you're using T5s, potentially four, maybe no more than six inches away. Uh, it does not have a lot of excessive heat produced, so that's another advantage to using fluorescent tubes here. T5s are the most efficient fluorescent option, but tend to be more costly than some other fluorescent tubes. A light temperature, so you might hear them expressed in degrees Kelvin. 2800 is considered a warm white for flowering. Cool white or sunlight is about 6500K. You can kind of get an appreciation for a little bit of the variance that they do produce. However, since these are not good flowering lights due to the lack of power produced, stick with the vegetative spectrums if you select this type of light. Again, they're not great for flowering, so you want to stay away from the warm whites and you want to stick more to those cool whites. Fluorescent tubes, typically 15 to 45 watts and 18 to 48 inches long. Shopper work lights can work, but they're not the best option because they have a poor plant spectrum, that poor PAR reading. T5 bulbs can uh, be placed higher above the plants. It's about 4 to 6 inches because of their increased in brightness. Um, fluorescents are well suited for shelving or vertical farming options that we see here with lettuce production. Reflectors are still important because you want the light emitting everywhere. You want it kind of concentrated and focused directly below onto the plant canopy. Fluorescents do have a ballast are required, especially for T5 lights, due to the quality of light production and use of cool running electronic ballasts. It also reduces the chance of that kind of flickering that you may get with some uh, lower quality bulbs. Keep in mind, though, that these bulbs do contain mercury and other toxic metals and need to be disposed of properly. Don't just simply throw them away. The bulb life, so when you do get to that kind of aged bulb, even though bulbs may not burn out, there is still a usable life to them. They may need to be changed out even if they're not considered to be dead, as we see here. A bulb life is a pretty long, about 20,000 hours, which is about two years if they're running 24 hours a day. It is recommended that you do replace these bulbs after about 15 months, but in actuality, replacing them every 10 to 12 months when using 18-hour days is preferred just to get that maximum amount to slow your plants so they're not stretching or getting light stressed. Fluorescent tube manufacturer comparison. Grower House did an excellent uh, comparison. I provided you with a link here and link at the bottom here of the PDF that they have. Um, even the exact same bulbs, different manufacturers have very specific ballasts and reflectors, and this can make a difference. See the links below, and you can kind of compare. Uh, while they are the same exact, you know, general fluorescent, I might think you're comparing apples to oranges here and the differences that they do get on some fixtures showing the importance of the manufacturer's uh, ballast and reflectors that they um, choose to use and sell with their bulbs.